Hey Renee. Hey, what are you doing here? We're here to ask you 73 questions. Oh, uh, it's not prepared for this at all. Champagne? Sure. Okay, it's down. Let's ask some questions. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Renee, uh, and if you couldn't tell already from that fun little introduction, we are doing the 1K Booktube Q&A. As is Booktube lore, when you reach a thousand subscribers, you can ask them to ask you questions, and then film it, and then answer them. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, and it wouldn't be me without a little something to celebrate. So, I'm gonna open this. I highly recommend, suggest, demand that you all grab yourself a drink as well. Because we have a few questions to get through. I mean, I won't judge you if it's morning, but if you really don't feel like drinking, you don't have to. Get yourself a cup of tea. I'd love that. I asked you on Instagram and on YouTube if there were any questions that you had for me. We got quite a few actually, so I will attempt to not ramble on for too long and get through them relatively quickly. Everyone got their drinks? Awesome. Cheers. Thank you. Mm. Delish. Okay, let's get into the questions. I'm going to start with bookish, uh, non-bookish questions and then we'll go into the bookish questions. Okay, first question. Do you ever see yourself living anywhere other than NZ? Yes. I could probably uh, picture Ruben and I living in somewhere like Sydney. It's kind of like a boring answer, but feels like a bigger, better version of Auckland. We've both spent a bit of time there, we both really like it. My parents live there, so... Yeah, I could definitely, like, realistically see myself, us living somewhere like Sydney. Um, a little bit more kind of dream-type scenario would be somewhere like uh, Japan, or if it spent five years living in Japan and he always talks about it very fondly, so I think we could do that. Also, I don't know why, but I'm just drawn to Italy. The people, the food, culture, it feels very similar to like some aspects of Māori culture, so I think I would just get along with Italian people really well. Okay, next question. First post-COVID travel destination. Um... We've got a lot of family that Rupert and I haven't seen for many years. Both his brothers live overseas and all of my family lives in Australia so I have not seen them in a very long time. So it would probably be visiting family. So that would be Sydney uh, and Brisbane and then Hong Kong and Berlin. And then in terms of like somewhere for just a holiday, like somewhere we could go and relax, I think, I know what Rupert would say, he would want to say Bali because he really loved it there and it was very relaxing. Um, and I would enjoy it right now as well, so we'll go with that. Next question is, favourite adult beverage and favourite snack? Okay, so number one is definitely champagne. Or anything bubbly has to be dry though um, but I am I'm just a big believer in a drink for every occasion celebrations definitely you have to have something sparkly mm. breakfast you've got your mimosa which again is just champagne with orange juice or something bubbly with orange juice or a Bloody Mary lunch bubbles is perfect because 
it's like a light drink usually you don't want to have too much it's fun bubbles bubbles fits most occasions um those are like cocktails i really like uh like a gimlet or a pisco sour can be quite nice as well which is just like a whiskey sour but swap out the whiskey for like a peruvian spirit pisco negroni is probably like a really good nightcap i'm partial to it an espresso martini every now and then as well and a beer just like a a really nice kind of like cold pale ale when it's hot and you just want something to like quench your thirst nothing too hoppy garage projects uh beer beer is really good for that uh and snack i'm pretty lazy when it comes to snacking so i just want something that's like ready to go so potato chips are like probably my big thing uh and with that i would pair a kiwi onion dip which if you're not from new zealand you might not know what that is it is uh reduced cream mixed with a packet onion soup and fresh lemon juice add that all in a bowl mix it all up bung it in the fridge for half an hour to set and you've got the perfect kind of dip for anything but potato chips especially um okay next question other hobby you love besides reading i don't really have any other hobbies that i would say i love as much as reading i like to knit mostly in the winter time because it feels like a cozy uh, activity it's also a good thing to do while you're like watching a movie or tv whatever it's like an activity that i quite enjoy doing is visiting a, a art galleries or seeing art in person museums anything like that i quite enjoy that it's like an activity i wouldn't say that that's a hobby though but reading is definitely number one okay next question first physical album you bought with your own money um tapes it was probably an s club seven tape don't know what album but that was like what i was into at the time and decided that's what i wanted to spend my pocket money on um and i think i, I would have bought like a britney spears tape at the same time because i remember having both those albums on tape so either one of those ones first cd would have been uh destiny's child's the writings on the wall like their very first album that was pretty dope i was excited about that vinyl which is something that rupert and i have just recently started purchasing after getting a record player uh, the first one that I bought for myself was Janet Jackson's Jam album, which is a surprise to no one. Um, next question. Most Aries thing about you? Probably how much I want to be in charge of everything. This is something that I've learned about myself recently. I never thought of myself as like a natural born leader, but I definitely want to be in charge. I don't necessarily want people to like follow me, but I want them to do what I say. Um, next question leads into that kind of birthday plans. So it's my birthday coming up uh, the 22nd of March and I have taken some time off because I like to do that every year. I used to just take my birthday off but recently I've started indulging in the idea of birthdays more and just take like a whole week off. Last year I think I had like 10 days and I just kind of like use that time to do what I want relax take myself out to lunch do a bit of shopping just whatever because it's my birthday and I can treat myself I'm a big believer in treating yourself so uh, next question favorite couple activity with Rupert we really enjoy probably going out to eat is our favorite thing to do we both really enjoy good food and it's the one kind of thing we allow ourselves to kind of indulge in we don't really spend money on anything else but like good food and a nice experience like being able to go out have a meal and spend time together is probably my favorite thing to do and the next question is what are you and rupert's dreams slash goals for the future i know this is something that rupert really wants to do and me too but it would probably involve some kind of like project or working on something together. Something that we can utilize both of our skills 
to either create a pro product, just work on something together. Probably travel will definitely be something that we're both keen to do very soon. Pro maybe buy something, like some kind of property to live in, own, would be quite nice. It's very hard in Auckland though because everything is so expensive. But yeah, that's, that's kind of something that we are starting to think about and just like be happy and enjoy each other and try not to kill each other. Next question. Uh, a lot of people asked about my job, what I did, how I got into it. My job is I am the marketing manager slash curator for a gallery, an art gallery in Ponsonby, on Ponsonby Road called Endemic World. Um, we offer probably the most diverse range of art for a gallery in all of Auckland. We pride ourselves in being a gallery that makes art accessible to everyone and my job is really to curate the art that goes into the gallery, so choosing new artists um, and then marketing that, so, and I really love it. It is definitely not a job that I ever thought I could do. I thought I would need a lot more kind of art history kind of behind me in order to be a curator. I do have an art background so I studied visual arts and design at art school and I majored in printmaking, specifically screen printing and textiles. There was definitely more of a hands-on um, practice based uh, degree and I had no idea what I was going to do afterwards. I thought I was going to go on to do some postgrad and become a teacher but I decided against that. I spent a lot of years, a few years, figuring out what I wanted to do. And yeah and I didn't even, I don't even think I really came up with like a plan of like this is what I want. It was more just opportunities came up bit by bit and I was able to work in a um, in a retail store that offered, that did screen printing. So I was the I guess studio assistant for a while there. I was doing that part time and then another part time role came up for like someone to do more admin at, at the store and I said yes to that. So I was doing part time admin, part time studio assistant and then from there kind of just took on more responsibility from there was able to build a connection with the gallery that I work for now and when a position came up at this gallery I jumped at it it was a chance to do something completely new and different definitely didn't see myself doing this you know five six years ago before I got the job so here we are five years later I really love it I feel very lucky and here's to that. The next question was, what are you most proud of? I think just going off the back of that question about my job, I am really proud of myself from where I've come in my career, because I didn't even think I would have a career. Yeah, I just think I've pushed myself outside of my comfort zone and said yes to a lot of things that maybe I wasn't like 100% confident that I could do, but I knew I'd figure it out. I'm really proud of myself for doing that, for I guess believing in myself that um, I could just do it. I feel really proud to say that I, the curator at a night gallery. This is the last bookish, non-bookish question. Um, and I love this one. It is, what's the lineup of your dream day? What are you wearing, doing, eating, seeing? To answer the first question, wearing probably this. Uh, any excuse to wear my matching um, little check linen purple lilac combo, uh, I will take it. Doing. So this is actually something that my friend and I like to do quite regularly and we just call it mooching. Just go for a mooch. Mooch about. And it's not really like proper plans. It's more like, oh, we want to do this one thing and then we'll see where the day takes us. Going to the art gallery, that's always a fun thing. There might be like some vintage or secondhand clothing shopping being had, maybe a little bit of book shopping as well. And then eating, definitely want to go for like a light kind of Italian meal. Amano in this city or Prego. 
and Ponsonby. Oysters will definitely be had, probably some bubbles, maybe even a cocktail. You just want somewhere that you can really sink in and have a long lunch. Probably is going to end up being quite busy. And then, more times than not, you end up back at someone's house and you keep drinking and you listen to music, you dance around, but it's all over by like 8 o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock, everyone's home in bed and that is like my dream day and something that I do very regularly, which I love. Okay, let's get into the bookish questions. Number one is, have you always been a hardcore reader? No, I have not always been a hardcore reader. I love the use of the word hardcore in this. Um, it's very serious. I probably just started reading really voraciously in the last kind of 18 to 24 months. So year and a half to a, to two years is probably when I started reading hardcore. Before that, not so much. Was probably reading like maybe two or three books a year. Nothing crazy, just like normal people stuff. Next question is book that made you love reading. I remember one of the first memories of reading or like the whole experience of going to the school library was to read uh, The Witches by Roald Dahl. I was obsessed with that book. I just always wanted to be the one to check it out at library time and would spend the whole hour or however long just with my nose in it. Uh, next question. Top three books you want to read in March. Stoner by John Williams, Priest Daddy by Trish Patricia Lockwood, and Too Much and Not My Mood by Durga Chu Bowles, which I actually started this morning. So those three books I'm really looking forward to reading. I think they're all going to be really good, so I'm excited. Next question. Favorite thing about booktube? I think something that's happened to me recently um, was someone saying that they picked up a book based off of a recommendation that I made and that they really loved it. I think that that so far has been one of the best things because it's just too wild to think that people watch these videos but then listen to what I have to say and go out and uh, read something and, and really enjoy it as well. It makes me feel like I'm doing this right in some way. Just It just gives me really nice feelings when people re reach out and say, I read this book and I really loved it like it's like giving a gift to someone that didn't cost anything okay next question how much time goes into one YouTube video it depends what the video is these sit down videos can be like pretty easy because you're just editing one clip most of the time if you're sitting down to like plan a video that might take maybe like a couple of hours of planning and then editing and filming maybe like two or three hours a vlog is obviously a lot much more is much more work because you just have so much more footage to edit together a vlog can sometimes take like three to four hours to edit and that fucking sucks but i am getting better at it if you were deserted on an island and could take only one book what book would you take i think it would probably have to be lord of the rings because I haven't read it. It's like a massive book. My copy is just all of the, 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 the three in the trilogy in one, so I don't feel like that's cheating. Yeah, it's like something that I could use my imagination with. I feel like it would really kind of take me away from being deserted on an island, so I think that would be my, that would be my pick. Okay, next question. Uh, most anticipated new to you author in 2022? I'm guessing this is like an author that I'm looking forward to reading for the first time this year. Pretty excited about reading some Eve Babbitts. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to see what she's all about. Yeah, she seems like she would be really cool and fun, but like important as well, because she's like kind of a classic. Next question, favorite NZ author? I get this question a lot, and I always find it really hard to answer because I do not read a lot of New Zealand writers. Also, like, it's not an annoying question, but it just makes me, like, why are you coming to me to ask me? Like, I'm not the authority just because I'm a New Zealander. Like, I'm trying to change that this year, but specifically with Māori authors, I'm trying to read as much as I can. And I think recently I've read a couple of books by New Zealand writers that I really enjoyed. 
Um, but yeah, I can't say, I haven't read enough of one New Zealand writer to know that they're like my favourite. But I read Soren Bliss by Meg Mason and I really enjoyed that. Um, I finished recently a collection of poetry by a Māori poet, a Māori woman poet, uh, Nicole Titihuya Hawkins. It's called Fai and that was really amazing. I really enjoyed that. Next question. Best book so far? Like so far this year or just so far ever? Maybe I could do both. So far this year I think for me it was have to be white on white just because that whole experience of reading that was really, it just felt really good and it had a lot of the things that I like in a story. And then I think Eva, I mean I haven't really been reading a lot for a long time so my kind of catalogue of books to go back to isn't that big but Blueberries by Eleanor Savage was probably, is a book that I think changed me in a lot of ways uh, it made me think about a lot of things when it came to reading and uh, it's definitely a book I want to reread so that would probably be my best book so far. Uh, how do you feel about Neil Gaiman? I don't know. I have never read any of his books so I don't have any thoughts or feelings about Neil Gaiman. Uh, I'm definitely open. If you have some recommendations for me, where to start, I'm open. I'm down for a bit of like mythical fantasy. That's what he writes, right? Like fantasy stuff, I'm guessing. Uh, favorite writer you feel they express you the best way? Again, I haven't been reading a lot for a long time to have read like enough of one writer's backlist of work in order to say that one writer best expresses me. There are really books that I feel like express specific ideas, feelings that I have towards certain things like Motherhood by Sheila Hedy that may as well have been like someone reaching into my brain and pulling out a lot of those thoughts, feelings about motherhood. Blueberries by Alana Savage was something that I really connected to on the way she talked about her trauma and uh, Nora Ephron's I Feel Bad About My Neck has this real kind of comic, sarcastic way about it that I feel leans more on that side of my personality and yeah I really kind of relate to that book in a lot of ways. Yeah I feel like there are there are different books for diff different times in my life and things in my life that I can draw from. So yeah no one writer but definitely books. Um, what's your favourite plot in novels? I don't know if this is like a plot but I like I like it when a book is set in like a really short time period so either like over a day or a weekend or like a really short week like five, five days. I like it when the characters in it are experiencing like a new place for the first time so any kind of travel somewhere whether it's like moving to a new city or going away on holiday um, I really enjoy kind of experiencing that place for the first time through the characters and I really like it when there is art involved so anytime characters are visiting an art gallery, seeing art, referencing art, if the character is an artist, yeah anything to do with art I'm kind of down for it. And I actually realised the other day when I was reading Cold Enough of Snow by Jessica Out that that book has all those things and that's why I loved it so much. So if you like all those things definitely would recommend reading that book. It was perfect in my eyes. Most controversial take on a popular book. Um, this book is pretty popular but maybe not so much in the literary world but I kind of read it before I started getting into like quite literary stuff and that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Just a terrible, terrible book. I know a lot of people read that book and loved it but it's just not good. Like the writing is terrible, the plot line is cheesy and badly done, the dialogue, like just there was nothing redeeming in that book for me. I loved the premise, you know, 1950s, 60s, 70s Hollywood 
that kind of storyline very gossipy if it was done well I would have loved it but no I don't feel bad because I know that that book sold millions so I can trash on it any authors you will never read I mean I have books by them but I think it's very likely that I'll never read them Philip Roth John DeLillo David Foster Wallace notice how they're all men uh, they're just people that like I could probably quite happily live my life and never have read anything from them. What's your perfect reading day look like? I think weather wise it's probably pretty nasty outside. You always feel pretty good about hunkering down with a good book when it's pretty gross outside. That would be the ideal kind of like weather setting. If you're gonna be inside reading, obviously I like reading outside but the conditions have to be very specific in order for me to properly sit outside and read all day but inside I would be sat in my corner in those cups of tea just like big old stack of books to suit whatever mood I may fall into just like the ability to just ultra focus and read for six hours straight yeah no distractions no chores to do like every the house is immaculate everything is done you're probably going to get a takeaway at the end of it just a day where you don't have any distractions you know you can just chill um a book you wish would be made into a movie i thought that while i was reading it the secret history i was like is this a movie and then i found out it wasn't i was like this needs to be a movie just like has all the great things in it for an amazing movie visually it would be very interesting you have a very big cast of characters to kind of play off of it's got that kind of thriller suspense plotline to it. Who do you think would play the four main characters? I think Julia Garner would play the, the twin sister. I don't know any of their names. That's the only one that I could visually think of. But yeah, who do you think would play those characters in the movie? Okay, the last question. Uh, what are some books you are putting off reading even though you think you'll love them and why? The Friend by Sigrid Nunes. I... I've heard so many good things from people I trust who say that it's amazing but I'm just worried that I'm not going to be one of those people like I'm not going to get it that it's going to be a bit too smart for me and so I'm kind of putting it off even though I know I think it'll be like a five star read for me and then another book would probably be Fake Accounts by Lauren Euler this is the book that I've kind of like gone back and forth about whether or not I even want to read it. Initially, like when I first heard of it, I was like, I have no interest in that. Like books about the internet are not really like books that I'm interested in. Yeah, there's just something about it that is like so many people love it. It's like almost in my eyes become not cool or like, oh, I'm not interested in it because everyone else really loves it type thing. Yeah, I think I just need to get over myself really and just suck it up and do it because what have you got to lose you might read your next favorite book and then you would have wished you picked it up sooner that's all the questions we made it um i just want to say thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed to this channel you made this possible without you i wouldn't be here i love you thank you so much to everyone who has watched this look forward to seeing where this baby goes. See you next time. Ka kite!